All right, so we've um, finished with the Civil War, and then we come up to Reconstruction in the New South. And um, so what really ends up happening, um, you know, just like at the end of the uh, American Revolution, we saw what happened with Shays' Rebellion. In other words, <clears throat> it's, it's often missed in popular culture, you know, you will read about a war and then we hear that somebody wins and somebody loses and then, you know, the winners go home and everybody's happy and now everything's done. But even for winners in wars, um, you know, a war was still a war. You don't just walk away from it and everything's fine. And I think this is one of the problems that's, in, you know, even now in American culture, where many people say, oh, they support the troops, but then they think that, you know, a soldier goes to a war and comes back and now he can, he or she can just have a normal life and we're supposed to um, expect that of them. And, uh, uh, you know, war takes its toll on, on, on people, regardless of whether one is a supporter of the idea or, I mean, in other words, I don't care what your politics are, your thoughts about a particular war. The history shows, and many people who survived uh, wars um, uh, know all too well uh, from from everything I've seen. I haven't experienced this, but you just don't walk away. And so the problem of peace then is uh, just that. Okay, so now what? And in the case of a civil war, it's even more complex. If you're fighting a, 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 your neighbor, um, you know, a neighboring country, and you have a, a, a vicious war, and then it ends and you win, you know, a, it may be easier to say, well, I don't really care about what's happening to that neighboring country. Uh, we're going to focus on ourselves now. That's what we do as a nation. Well, the, the war and the peace all were together in one. It's one nation now, right? The, the seceding states got forced back into the Union under a different set of circumstances. So uh, um, Reconstruction is going to uh, be difficult, and uh, the South was desolate. Um, if you looked in the textbook, um, and uh, if you recall me talking about Sherman, I didn't go over Sherman's march as heavily um, as I could have. It was talked about in the textbook. Um, the Union did a scorched earth policy, or, or, or at least with Sherman, he did, where fields were burned down, uh, uh, buildings were, were, were dismantled. I, I mean, we're talking about total war to make the civilian population want to uh, surrender, to lose their will. And so after the war, you have to now do what? Right. So for, for blacks and whites... Um, Anybody living in the South, it was um, it was war torn, right? Okay, and um, there was an uncertain future for everyone, okay, uh, uh, in terms of, of of what everything would look like, and I think that we have to appreciate that. Um, now, um, for the North, there there was this idea that um, you know. The, with, the, with the freeing of the slaves, you have to do something for the slaves, okay? And, um, I, I mean, I mean, right, so let, let's, let's make this clear, okay? Um, if you have an entire population, a large population of blacks that were only uh, uh, owned, no, they weren't just owned by whites, they were also, they, they were also fed and um, clothed and given housing by their masters, which is what the masters always tried to, to, you know, use to justify, hey, look, you know, we're taking care of these people. Well, the downside for slaves in a certain sense right off the bat is um, now your master doesn't provide you those things and you live in a society that doesn't like you. So what can a black person do under the circumstance, unless there is actual state intervention. So we had the Free Freedmen's Bureau was created in Congress in, eight, in 1865 
to distribute food to former slaves. Uh, it established schools and uh, it even to a certain extent helped some poor whites, um, but only had authority to operate for a year. Now, this picture I have over here to the right is a propaganda a piece against um, this idea. And you'll notice, I mean, it's interesting to me, um, the kind of idea of, of portraying the black person on welfare, lazy. Um, this is what is basically going to be pushed out by the whites here. And, you know, it's interesting, right? I mean, these were considered the most ideal workers by the whites if they were their slaves. Now they're not slaves and now they're the complete lazy loafers. Um, they're milking off society and their minds, even though they were used with their labor to build almost all the South. Uh, it's, it's buildings um, develop its agricultural uh, sector and so on. Um, but uh, I mean, so, so here, the Freedmen's Bureau, an agency to keep the Negro in idleness at the expense of the white man. But of course, slavery was never at the expense of the black man. Well, you get my point. Okay. In any case, um, that was set up. Um, issues of reconstruction. And this is what I uh, have you uh, all discuss. And this is um, something that I keep going over. Every time I rethink and go over this period, I go through different... Um, sets of conclusions on, on certain things and realize the kind of difficulty of, of this time period that, that uh, uh, we're dealing with. For me, it's very straightforward, in my opinion. Um, the South broke away and its leadership, it's a leadership, uh, were traitors. I mean, that's what you would just say in any nations. From a nationalist point of view, um, you know, a part of a nation to break away with guns and to start shooting and create its own military to cause war for any cause, that has to be considered a traitor, right? I mean, George Washington is our hero, but had he been caught, he did, you know, he was a, 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 a soldier for the British and then he turned his guns on the British. He was a traitor. Um, and part of the reasons why George Washington, you know, really knew and his men that they had and, and many of the founding fathers why they had to win is that they would be treated in kind in the American Revolution by the British. Uh, there wasn't a question. They were traitors. They felt they had a justification to be and that they happened to win and were able to escape that uh, circumstance and that label and survive. Now, we have the Civil War. Over half a million Americans killing each other, and we still have the political leadership of the South intact, and we have this now freed large population of blacks that nobody really wants or knows what to do with, and we're also trying to become a united country again. Do you see? This is, this is a, a real mess of the situation. So the radicals, as they were called, uh, radical Republicans, um, they were led by um, Representative Thaddeus Stevens of Pennsylvania and Senator Charles Sumner of Massachusetts. And essentially, um, they had a vision of the uh, uh, post-Civil War that um, might be seen more as just to some but not as, but not practical to others, and um, you know I'm going to return to this in the next lecture, and we'll go into more details talking about this um, conflict of visions of the post Civil War era.